Hello everyone, and welcome to part 4 of me explaining the negative backrooms levels. The first three parts will be down below in the description if you're interested in checking those out. They're bangers. And I just want to thank all of you for the support on this series. It's been insane, and all three parts so far have over 100k views. That's crazy. Thank you. But without further ado, let's get into the video where I'll be explaining level negative 7 and level negative 8 and level negative 10. Let's get into it. But first, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Ridge Wallet. Let me show you something. This is my dad's bulky leather wallet. This is a Ridge Wallet. Quite the difference there. Ridge Wallets are such an awesome way to carry your cards and your cash in such a compact and sleek way. They can hold up to 12 cards and there are over 30 styles and colors to choose from. And you can also pick between the cash strap and the cash clip. So there's gonna be something to make everyone happy. This wallet is the black Damascus colorway, but I've actually been using the aluminum tiki colorway for over three years and I've never wanted to go back to a ordinary leather wallet. Now on top of looking really cool, all Ridge wallets have RFID blocking technologies built inside of them to protect you from digital pickpocketers. Ridge is so confident that you'll love your wallet that if you get one, you have 45 days to return it and get your money back. If you're interested, go to the top link in the description below and use the first link, ridge.com forward slash Brugly and use code Brugly at checkout for 15% off your order. Thank you to Ridge for sponsoring this video. Go check them out down below in the top link of the description and let's get back to the video. So first up is level negative seven or sometimes as it's called ground negative seven. This level was a level discovered by the Eye of Argos group, which apparently is always watching. So that's neat. But the level itself is classified as a class peccatum, which is a fancy word for sin. So it's a class sin and is corrupted and extremely dangerous. There's also a high entity count here as well. Level negative seven physically looks like a huge abandoned mining town in the Russian countryside. The outside of the town is surrounded by disgustingly polluted water systems and woods that are full of radiation. And that radiation comes from the nuclear power plant that's located in the middle of the city, which also seems to be collapsed and destroyed itself, but it still leaks nuclear radiation. The Argos group claims that something is controlling level negative seven, which might explain the influx of missing people on the level, but uh, who knows? Other than what I just told you and the Argos group saying that the level is a sinful area, there's literally no other information on it. No information on entities or entrances, there's only one exit that's listed, and it might exist. It's not even confirmed. That is, if you walk into the radiation-filled forest for long enough, you'll end up at level 10. Which, to be fair, is a safe level. So if you get to level negative 7, I recommend just sprinting through the woods as fast as you can until you get to level 10. But yeah, that's it for this one. Not much info on it, but definitely a cool level. Next for today's video is level negative 8. This level is classified as class undetermined and is another abandoned mineshaft level and is pretty similar to level negative 6 in how it's laid out, except this one is dark at the start and gets darker as you go. Level negative 6 was light at the start and got darker as you went, so it wasn't dark the whole time. On this level, every 100 meters you go into the mine, there are splits in the path that go into 3 to 6 different directions and each of these directions has a number assigned to it from 0 to 9. The number is randomized, so there's no real order, but I'll explain the significance of those numbers in a second. The pathway in the mines is always wet, and there are random puddles too. Some of the puddles are actually really deep, and can be up to 50 meters deep, which is 164 feet for us Americans. There are pipes that run along the bottom corners of the mine shaft, and some of them are actually broken, which causes them to leak the water that runs through them and flood the level even more. However, sometimes those pipes will randomly rumble, and if this happens, it means that there's a huge flood coming. Now, these floods will take up almost the entire diameter and fill the entire mine shaft like a huge rush of running water. So, if you see the pipes rumbling, run the other way, or you're not going to make it. And you'll only see these pipes if you're on the right track to find something that you can use, like a room or a hidden item or even the exit, so that's handy. 
Those numbers from zero to nine that each path is labeled are actually really important. And there's been a key made from those numbers for the safest route to get through the level. The key is 9392547804162538. So those are the paths that you have to take to get out safely. Like I said, those numbers are randomized, but the number themselves are on wooden signs by the paths. Look for that number sequence on each path. So the first path you'll take will be 9, then 3, then 9, and so on and so forth. There are other paths with keys as well, which could be more dangerous or lead to a different entity, so don't get confused. You have to follow that exact code. The items that are on this level range from crowbars to memory jars, so there's a pretty good chance that you'll run across something good. Although, I'm not sure how useful a crowbar is. There was also an entity sighting here where four explorers claimed that they saw two huge red eyes staring at them from deep down a pathway and that the figure has a shadowy body with really long arms and it can run at extremely high speeds around the level. It's also said that this entity wants explorers to suffer pain and not completely unalive. Nice. There are also other entities like Smilers, Death Moths, Hounds, and Facelings. You know, the typical ones. But they're not that common, but look out for them. You can enter level negative 8 by going deep into those woods of level negative 7 and finding a mine shaft, and you can exit the level by following that path key that I said earlier to get to level negative 9, which apparently doesn't exist yet, or you can jump into a puddle to be sent to positive level 7, whichever you prefer. So yeah, another mine shaft level. This one's creepier than level negative 6 though, I gotta say. Last up for today's video is level negative 10. Before you freak out, I didn't skip negative nine. Negative nine isn't written yet, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cover level negative 10 to finish off the negative level series. Level negative 10 is classified as a class four survival difficulty and is really unsafe and unsecure. It takes the physical appearance of a playground at nighttime and is completely surrounded by forests. This level is referred to as a spatial dimension, and it's made up of infinite variants of that playground. If you enter the level in a group, you'll all be sent to different playgrounds, because there's so many different variants. The level also doesn't allow any digital communications, so it's pretty much a self-isolation chamber, because you can't talk to anybody. There are actually other playgrounds that you can get to from your playground by following paths through the woods and the trees, but it's very dangerous to explore too much since the level is crawling with entities. Sometimes the playgrounds of this level have really weird envelopes with letters inside of them that have strange cryptic messages. Here's one of them. Along the pass through the woods to the other playgrounds, there's also these like abandoned cabins that are just out of place for the level, and they act really weird sometimes, like they'll just randomly appear and disappear at any time they want to. There are no bases or outposts here, and it would be almost impossible to make one since you can't even use a radio. And to enter the level, you have to go through level 9, which again, isn't made yet, but you gotta get through there to get to this one. And to exit, well, there's only one way, and it's to go left at a dead end on one of the trails, and this will take you back to level negative 8. Cool. A freaky abandoned playground at dark, surrounded by woods. Love to see it. And yeah, that's it for the fourth installment of the Negative Backrooms level series. Hopefully you liked the video. Thank you for your support. Thank you to my channel members and patrons for supporting me, as always. Thank you to everyone for watching. Channel is still going crazy. We're almost at 150k subs. Wow. Thank you to Ridge for sponsoring this video. Go check them out with the top link in the description. Use my code Brugly at checkout for 15% off. That's awesome. 50% for real. Their products are great. I'm personally attesting to it. Thank you for everything, guys and girls, and I will see you later.